virus-induced diseases uh, present a significant health burden if you think of HIV or Zika virus, for example. And to fight viral infections, our body is equipped with a set of immune cells. And in the central, central nervous system, which includes the brain and the spinal cord, these uh, key immune sentinels are called microglia. And uh, microglia's job is it to detect and to restrict the spread of pathogens. And in general, this is a protective response, but in some settings, uh, this response can be um, overly active. We injected a virus called adenovirus. Uh, adenovirus is um, a, a virus that in humans can cause a variety of illnesses, mostly respiratory infections. But because the virus is so effective in in infecting a variety of different cells and tissues as well as hosts, it has also become an important tool for basic research as well as for clinical trials. The main thing we saw was cells that were infected with this virus began to go missing. We saw that microglia, the resident immune cells in the brain, were actively destroying and engulfing these cells. But in cases such as like gene therapy, if the immune cells come in and take it away, then you'll lose any potential therapeutic effect you could have. So the idea is, well, if we can rescue that, if we can rescue the ability to keep those cells there, somehow maybe evade the brain's immune response so that those cells are still living, then we can keep that therapeutic effect there genetically. Immune response tends to be very complex, so it was surprising to find that manipulating a single protein called phospholipid scramblase 1, or for short PLSCO one can have this uh, very um, uh, pronounced protective effect. And uh, when we do that, then also microglia will stay calm, they, will, well, they won't uh, mount an inflammatory response. Normally these cells would be eliminated within a few days or weeks, and now they can live on for at least six months, if not longer. The cool thing was, it was, not only did we were able to rescue the cells that disappeared, but we also showed that the other aspects of neuroinflammation in the brain were also reduced. We think an, an important next step will be to look at whether um, PLSCO1 is indeed capable of controlling the inflammatory response in other uh, disease settings, other virus infections of the brain, um, but also um, infections uh, outside the central nervous system or autoimmune diseases or cancer.